funding for Jan Scott tonight is provided by Boulder Army Store and by Terry Chiropractic and Healthcare by Dinstall's Fine Garage by Nature's Own Imagination Additional funding provided by Mike's Camera and Video and by the Boulder Salad Company by Hotel Boulderado by Uptime by Boulder Denver Couriers and by Rock Bottom Restaurants. In this first segment on Jan Scott tonight, we talk about fire. John Graham and I, cameraman, were driving down Interstate 25 when we noticed a grass fire that had just started. Um, the fire exploded across the highway. We captured it here on film. It's fire on Jan Scott tonight. At the fire. Don't aim at the smoke. This fire is coming right at us, right next to uh, Interstate 25, headed south. Look at the cars. We just picked it up now. This one's right on us, ladies and gentlemen. Slope dance down, down there.
save your foot and save your camera. Uh, we decided to play chicken with uh, Californians, you know, the ones who just moved here. So Ford Motor Company invited us down to test drive some of the new Fords for uh, 96. We get to jump them over the big... Uh, actually, we don't get to do anything like that. They were kind of wimpy. They didn't let us rock and roll the cars. Playing chicken with Californians. Next. TJ Dersh, everyone. Famous race car driver from California is visiting here in Denver showing Fords. Hi, TJ. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Take a look here at the uh, all-new Escort for 1997. We'll take a look first in the engine compartment. First biggest change that we will find here is uh, the two-liter split-port induction power plant producing 110 horsepower, 125 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, that's a great improvement over last year, over 20% over last year's model. Up here, regarding safety, a couple of safety issues. We've got interior aimed uh, halogen headlights, which create a very intense beam and properly aimed, mm -hmm. can give you a very good uh, safety advantage there for nighttime driving. Sure. Over here we've got inside the vehicle, which is kind of hard to see underneath the fenders, there's been reinforcement in this area for the crumple zone and for uh, overall safety support. And of course we have the anti-intrusion beams in the door. How thick are the intrusion beams? Let me stop you there. Ford's starting to use race car technology to make the car safer? Yes, they're definitely starting to beef up this area of the car because this, is, this has really been an area that consumers have been focusing on over the last couple of years. Yeah. Okay, inside on the vehicle, uh, definitely some big improvements in interior space and I think the improvements on the outside as far as styling are quite obvious. Uh, for what we've dealt with so far and the people that we talked to, they're very positive about the new styling design. In the rear of the vehicle, uh, one great improvement for 97 is uh, the changeover to a rear quadrilink which gives it even more stability and more inherent uh, in invasive type maneuvering. No, okay, well one last thing here with yep. the vehicle. Um, for putting all our race gear in the trunk, we've got more room this year. We've got 12.8 uh, cubic feet as opposed to 12.1 from last year. And you also notice oh. just a couple of convenience things, low lift in. Oh height. hell, you can put a dead body in here. I, I think I can uh, get in here. This would be a good gangster. This would be a good gangster car, huh? A John Gotti car. <laughs> Stab me! <laughs> Do you see that movie, Goodfellas? Oh, never mind. That's a whole other thing. All right. This is the Lincoln Mercury Mountaineer. Uh, it's trademark being the waterfall type grill on the front gives it that look of look class. Look at this, straight out of a '52 uh, '52 Merc. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? They've definitely maintained that very uh, elegant styling uh, uh, signature. Uh, underneath the hood, this is uh, the standard. We've got a five liter V8 engine here, generating 211 horsepower, 274 foot-pounds of torque. Mm -hmm. So more than ample horsepower for most applications. Um, is this all-wheel drive now? Yes, this okay. is all-wheel drive. And there is a distinction between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. And the nice thing about all-wheel drive is you're not sacrificing economy to gain the advantage of all-wheel drive. And the way that this particular system, the Borg Warner system, works mm -hmm. is with a viscous coupling or a viscous limited slip differential, it's going to allocate power to the wheels that are slipping, or excuse me, away from the wheels that are slipping to the wheels that have grip. You can change in a percentage of as, as much as 35% to the front to 65% to the rear or vice versa, depending on where the grip is at. How many wheels will drive at all times? Four wheels. Oh, all four. So it is all. They'll lock up. Yes. Well, it's all wheel, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to try to seek where the grip is, and that's where it's going to put the power up to 65%. Unlike a four-wheel drive, it's usually only two wheels pulling, right? Or you may have a lock well, differential a in the rear. A four-wheel drive will usually have a fixed ratio of somewhere around 70 rear, 30 front. So if you start to get slip in the rear, it's going to continue to slip. Your front will still drive, but not at the same rate that the rear will. Isn't it wonderful to talk to somebody that actually knows about the cars? Okay, continuing here with the... Uh, this is the Mercury Mountaineer. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, over here... For um, convenience features here, we have the uh, the running board here for step-in. Yeah. You may notice that it's a very easy vehicle to access as far as getting in and out of. It does have a very low lift-in height, where some of the other SUVs in the market will actually have. Oh, uh, I see. I can step up here, right. jump in. Pretty convenient to get into. Mm -hmm. Jan, do you like nice. the uh, sunroof above you there? Oh, yeah, you this pull is nice. that back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Up. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Okay. We've also got compass control. Uh, upper console mount and on the mirror you can see you've got dimmers. This is this is the top end package right here. Um, of course you sitting in leather. Leather. That means they killed cows for this car. <laughs> oh, we don't have to put that in. Okay. Okay, back in the rear of the vehicle, the first thing you probably notice is the roominess. It's a very large vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, inside, for volume, 81.6 cubic feet as far as the seats folded down. You also notice that the seat configuration will accommodate two adults where you can fold down this side to put the skis in, which would probably be a pretty popular, popular item up here in Denver. Um, also, 
the overall um, access back here is a very low lift in height and mm -hmm. they're using two latches on the side so nothing can really damage it's it. a pretty car it's, it's nice isn't it now how does this compare to the Ford Explorer Ford Explorer the bi biggest difference is probably deal with the all-wheel drive mm -hmm. okay V8 being standard mm -hmm. it's got uh, standard is four-wheel disc ABS that well, comes standard with all so mountain Ford Explorer is not all-wheel drive is that right that is correct oh, okay. okay they can't you can't get that um, you can get of course a two-wheel drive in this option but I would think in this part of the country that yeah. probably wouldn't be a popular yeah. item no waste of time okay the Mountaineer okay and so just drive over nice and easy oh yeah it lifts right up here doesn't it yeah Jesus this okay, is a little to your left a little to my left there you go this okay, is straighten it out and you're good this is very <laughs> I don't know the hell kind of television job this is. Get to drive the cars around the hotel. This is nice. This handles actually pretty well. These things are bumpy. It's uh, TJ Dersh, everybody, famous race car driver, came to uh, Denver from California to show us the. Mercury Tracer. That's correct. Let's take a look up here. We'll start up at the front end of the car. Before we open the hood, I want to point out the headlights here. Those are interior AIM halogen headlights. Very good for directing a very precise beam far down the road. So it's very good for safety. Mercury Tracer, the upscale version of the Escort, yes? Uh, well, actually, the vehicles are similar in some ways. Just different uh, different uh, recognition here. Uh, start off with the engine. Split port induction, 2 liter power plant, generating 110 horsepower, 125 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, and they've ac accomplished that without sacrificing any fuel economy over last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, as far as safety, a couple key issues. First of all, crumple zone's been reinforced in here. There's uh, support that runs the width of the vehicle to prevent intrusion inside the vehicle from a side impact and of course a very thick and reinforced uh, side intrusion beams for the doors. Mercury starting to use race car technology. Oh certainly are. They're really beefing up their components for safety. Mm -hmm. Inside the vehicle it's a much larger overall interior space as far as hip room um, and leg room. Okay and in the rear of the vehicle's trunk, uh, trunk space has been increased to 12.8 cubic feet over 12.1. So I think you can see with the styling greatly improved uh, over last year. Very current very uh, up-to-date styling. Yeah. And, and uh, over the old tracers, is it a, a vast increase oh. in, in, in technology? Greatly, yeah. greatly. The rear, uh, the rear quadrilink suspension has done a lot for stabilizing the vehicle. Very good handling vehicle, a lot more power, a lot more horsepower without sacrificing fuel economy. Hey everybody, it's uh, Mr. Fix-It from uh, KHOW here at the Ford event. So what do you think, Paul? I like them. Which ones? I take the them best? all home. Huh? All take of them, them all home, yeah. <laughs> they give them to me. A little pricey on a couple of these things. Uh -huh. This this car's a little pricey, yeah. but I mean, it's, I'm sure it's worth it. It's a with a V8, you can pass anything. What's your favorite car? My favorite car yeah. uh, in the whole wide world? No, right here today. Uh, right here event. today. Yeah. I like this one. This one here. This is. Yes. What are we sitting in? It's a Mercury <laughs> Mountaineer. The Mercury Mountaineer. Yeah. Thanks. You Paul bet. McGregor, everybody. Mr. Fixit, KHW. Listen to him. <laughs> Scott Cordelou, everybody, with uh, KOA News here at the uh, Ford event. What do you think, Scott? You're a Ford man, right? Uh, well, I'd like to have one. Uh -huh. Which one? Oh, one of these? Yeah, which one do you like? Uh, I'd like to have it in white. I always buy white trucks. Uh -huh. Why is that? So uh, they're cooler like in the summer. Oh, I thought it was like the OJ thing, you know? No. Well, that too. <laughs> I have a white Bronco <laughs> and a white pickup and a black Mustang. Uh, TJ, thanks very much for uh, showing us the new Mercury Tracer. Jan Scott tonight, we bring you the most knowledgeable people in cars, and this guy races them. You train people in driving them and everything. That's you? correct. Jim Russell Racing School in California. Well, Playboy came to Boulder in uh, April, and we went out and interviewed some of the girls. We interviewed some of the young girls upstairs in their hotel rooms. Would you take your clothes off for $250? And then we went downstairs and interviewed Dykes and asked them the very same question. Here at the uh, Regal Harvest House, where Playboys come by to recruit young women, ladies and gentlemen, to take their clothes off. It's disgusting. Well, I don't know. It depends on if you're a guy. Maybe not too disgusting. Or if you're a lesbian, maybe it's like really great fun. Anyways, here's the protest. The, now, would you take your clothes off for Playboy? No. Okay. Would you take your clothes off for $25,000? No. Why not? Because my dignity is worth a lot more than $25,000. I'm sorry, but you can't buy... Um, you can't buy your self-confidence and your self-esteem with money. 
Thank you. Next person. Okay, now would you take your clothes off for twenty five thousand? Never. Right. <laughs> take your clothes off for Playboy? Never. Oh my God, I would never submit myself to the patriarchal order that way. I respect myself and my sexuality, and I'm going to stay clothed to prove my point. I've been with Playboy for about 17 years. Mm -hmm. My name is in the masthead of the magazine and has been since 1979. So I have worked on a lot of pictorials for the magazine, and I work tandem with Dave on these color and have since 1980, 81. Mm -hmm. So what's, how are you received here in Boulder so far? So far it's been great. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a huge turnout. Uh, we're very happy with it. I think we've got about 40 young women coming in to, to meet with us. And um, I had, you know, I thought if we got 30, 35 would be mm -hmm. great, but this is just first day. We've already got 40 names signed up to come in and, and talk to me about being in the magazine. And we've got all day tomorrow, so we're gonna have a really good turnout here. Now, will you take pictures today? What's going on here today? Or do you come back or do you pick, do you pick somebody or what's happening? Well, actually today what we do is we, we try to just meet the women and try to, what I call, break the ice with them. Let them get to know me a little bit, get to know my crew. And I have them fill out a short information form to um, find out some information about them. And then we will do what I call an ID photo of them. It's not really a, it's not a photo shoot. I mean, we're just doing like a couple of Polaroids just to help me remember wh who they were when they came in. How much do they get paid? Uh, well, it's several hundred dollars. Several hundred, hundred thousand, no, hundred dollars. Several hundred. Several they would hundred. love to make it several hundred thousand, but no, it's several so hundred. So why would they do it only for a few hundred dollars? That actually is a very good question. I've, you know, in the over the years, I've been told. Well, for, uh, I'll put it this way: when they come in, they don't even expect to be paid for the yeah. for the most part, which is interesting. Um, and so, when I tell them that they're going to be paid a modeling fee, they're like very surprised, pleasantly so. They're very surprised that they're getting paid something. And uh, a lot of the times, they don't do it. F I don't think they're coming in doing it for the money. Mm -hmm. It's it's a thrill. It's something different for them. It's something new, and they're fascinated by the magazine. And I think a chance to be one of the models in a magazine is enough. How, how do they know that you won't try to mess around with them during the photo session? I think that in that in that initial interview, yeah. I think they can they can feel sort of where I'm coming from. They feel I think that I cre I start that road to them trusting me as a photographer from the very outset, and that happens during the interview process. And I think that even in the f in the 15 or 20 minutes that that they're here and they meet with me, that it's that it's there's no way, shape, or form that they're uh, that they're afraid that I'm going to try to like put a move on them or something during the photo shoot. I think that they leave here very comfortable with the fact that this guy's like you know very professional and is really here to photograph me and make me look really beautiful. Now, are, are you gay? By any <laughs> <chance>? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, no, I'm not. You're I'm I'm, ex okay. I'm no, I'm not. I'm very straight okay. and have. It'd be helpful if you were gay. It would probably yes, it would. It probably would. No, I'm. I have. I I, I don't know. I just. Um, what I, I love what I do, I love my work, and I love my photography, and I have gotten to the point to where it's, uh, I can control my emotions both physically and emotionally fairly well. Now you're the person who's responsible for this demonstration. Not all the madness, it's my fault. What is going on here? <laughs> Just what the heck is up? Well basically, we are out here today as conscientious objectors to Playboy being here in Boulder, recruiting CU women who are my peers. Um, they are my peers at CU, and I find it really, really disheartening that they want to um, pose for Playboy when they have so much already going for them in the college environment. They stand to be among the professionals of our generation. So I suppose uh, asking you to take your clothes off for Playboy would be completely out of the question. That's Definitely. A good way to get my face slapped, right? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't resort to violence. I'll just. Ooh, good. Okay. Yeah. Now is Playboy pornography? Yes, it is. Okay. But it's clever. It's softcore, and softcore is not as objectionable to a lot of people and I think that's really problematic because I think that the violent may not be so obvious but it's still there but what we're here today is trying to question why the women choose to do it because I f I fervently believe that the women choose to do it they're not coerced into doing it although the society has arranged that it kind of you know so nudges them in that direction I've been trying to get a clear answer as to uh, everybody's position on pornography if it's good or bad and or if it's indifferent and so you've sort of said that it's it's bad for people and then and as it exists now it is I think that um, a lot of people draw a line between erotica and pornography and I think that as it exists now pornography is about the sexualization of power differentials and it's also about um, I mean women are dehumanized and that's you know the standard feminist rhetoric. Do you think it leads to um, to rape and to the abuse of women and uh... I think that
there's a lot of time really wasted on the argument of causality. Um, I think that there is a correlation there. It's part of a culture that takes women for granted. It objectifies them and it lets men take possession of them and determine what happens to them. They are the objects of their fantasies and so when they are encountered in real life they are easily rendered into that same position so that they can be abused in a domestic situation or they can also um, be raped or day raped and that's, Im that's particularly important in a college town. Protest outside. They say that what you're doing is exploiting women for pornography. Well, you know, they're entitled to their view. Uh, I, d I disagree with that completely, of course. I would have to, I think. I work for the magazine. I love what I do. I'm a, I'm a talented photographer. I, I, at least that's what Playboy tells me. And, and they continue using me on these projects. Well, if it isn't exploitation, what is it? It's photographing um, beautiful women basically, I mean, for Playboy. I mean, it's it's giving them a chance to be models for the magazine. We offer them a chance to, to be models. We, we place an ad in the school paper. We don't go around the campus soliciting them. We don't walk up and go, you know, you really should be in Playboy. Yeah. We place an ad. No, guys like me, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, kidding, but what that. we do is we literally place the ad. They, if they would like to be in the magazine, they call us. They make an appointment. They come over. They meet with us. We give them all sorts of chances to back out. You know, if they don't want to be in the magazine, they don't have to continue the process from this point on. So, do, now you know Hefner, huh? You know Hugh Hefner? Yes, I do. You work for him, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 He's my boss. Can I get, like, ears hat to wear? A couple of ears hat? Or the bunny tail? Could I? Uh, you know, <laughs> there may be one or two <laughs> laying around. I don't know. I want a hat. You want a hat? I want, like, a Playboy hat with, like, big ears. Uh, uh, that I would, I would wear it on my television show. Wouldn't I look great in the are the young women who are going to take their clothes off. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm from Denver. You're from Denver? Yeah. Okay. That sounds almost like a contestant in a, con a beauty contest. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah, and I am from Denver. Oh, I, very nice. I always do that. Okay, oh. so what made you want to be in Playboy? Um, I've been thinking about it for a couple years now, and I haven't really had the opportunity to get started in it. Um, I heard an ad on the radio this morning, and I thought I'd come check it out. You go to CU? Uh-huh. I go to CU Denver. Yeah. CU Denver, and you have your ID? Uh-huh, I do. And how old are you? I'm 22. You're tw oh, you're 22. Uh -huh. And we always check the IDs, by the way. You always check IDs. Always check the IDs. They must be a current or part-time student. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so now you, you know that you, you're going to have to take your clothes off. Uh-huh, I do. <laughs> you don't care? Um, I think Playboy is a very classy magazine. I think it's um, done in really well taste. <laughs> Good have, taste. You have you ever taken your clothes off for money before or for a magazine? No, I haven't. No. For that's, what makes, that's what makes Playboy very special, too, that these young women would would uh, pose nude for Playboy and not any other magazine or any other publication or any other reason for just, you know, for that. I mean, for that reason alone, it makes them very special. How much are they going to pay you? Um, I think a couple hundred dollars. A couple hundred dollars. Uh, when you get to go to the mansion, when you get to go to Chicago, do you get like a free sports car? I haven't heard anything about that. <laughs> the free sports car? Oh my God. So what, good, but what else happens? What if you get chosen? Um, I hope to pursue an acting career someday, so I think this may be a start mm -hmm. in in putting my foot in the door um, in this kind of business. Now, uh, have you told your girlfriends about it? No, 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 no. Why not? <laughs> um, a lot of my family and a lot of my friends don't support um, some of the things that I do, like uh, coming here today on this interview. Oh. Um, I personally feel like I have no problem with it. Um, I'm an adult. I make my decisions on my own. and. So I'm here. She is an adult. So and and uh, uh, do you have a boyfriend? I do. And does he know that you're here too? Um, he actually heard the ad on the um, radio this morning, and he woke me out of bed and told me that I needed to come down here. So what a boyfriend, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what's your name? Where are you from? Caitlin Sabo. Where am I from? From here now. From Boulder. Yeah, I've I've been here for five years. Do we know each other? Yes. Have we met in a blackout? I, perhaps, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, I know a Playboy girl. And w why did you apply for the ad? Um, basically because a couple different reasons. I'm heading towards Hollywood in about four months and oh want to yeah. pursue a film career. And so I thought this might be good practice to see how I feel about taking my clothes off in front of the public. Because <laughs> it may happen again someday. And you're on our casting couch right here. <laughs> this is so great. Um, um, and how much are they going to pay you? If I take my clothes fully off, yes. I think it'll be five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars, that's good. Well, you can. Yeah, I don't know what you can do with five hundred dollars. You can. It'll help me get to Hollywood for one. There you go. That's very important. Uh, that, and uh, what do your parents think of the idea? Well, I haven't told my parents yet. <laughs> Have you told your girlfriends yet? I've told one of my girlfriends. And what'd she say? She said that if she was still a student, she would have come in too. And do you have a boyfriend? Yes. And what do you 
what does he think? He fully supports it. Oh, cool. My name is Cynthia Maisel. I go to school here in Boulder. Mm-hmm. And you're a CU student? Yes, I am. Where are you, are you from? Where are you from, Boulder, Denver? I'm from Boulder? Denver. My family lives down there. Uh huh. Okay. So, why do you want to uh, post for Playboy? Actually, I saw the ad in the paper, and it looked like a good opportunity. Who knows? Maybe it'll open some new windows. How did the interview go today? It was very casual, really non-formal. It just gave you a chance to get to know the people who, if you were selected for the position, you would be working with. So now, would you take your clothes off for Playboy? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. And uh, how much are they going to pay you? Um, it depends on what you're comfortable doing. They go on your comfort zone and mm-hmm. what you're willing to do. So have you done modeling yeah. before? Or no, I have not. Or, so you've never taken your clothes off for money before? No, I have not. Okay. And oh, what's your major? I'm a classics major. Classics? What is that? Um, I study Latin and Greek and the old traditional kind of education. Channel 2, news person, you watch on television all the time. Uh, would you take your clothes off for Playboy? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, okay. Why should I? <laughs> okay, would you take your clothes off for $25,000? I wouldn't take my clothes off for any amount of money. Oh, I'm, that, is that rolling? <laughs> no, it's not rolling. It's just, uh, it's just Well, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to scare anyone. So, so I, would you? I, I, um, if they asked you. If they asked me? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'd do it. <laughs> and, and what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name's Chrissy. Oh, you're a photographer. I'm a photographer. A news photographer. Yeah, a news photographer. But we won't tell the newspaper that you're a photographer. Would you feel worse if Hustler was here? I think that if Hustler were here, it would be a lot easier to mobilize against them. <laughs> I really it'd do. Be, it'd I be a nightmare. Women would come out in droves. But today, because Playboy presents himself as like a woman-oriented corporation, Christy yeah. Heffner is the CEO, all the yeah. spokespersons are women, and I think that that's deceiving. Because even though all the women are in such high positions, Playboy has not changed. Nothing has changed in the photographs, and the articles and everything that makes it so great, according to so many people, they still exist in the context with pictures of naked and near-naked women. So I don't think that I will not. I mean, maybe it is a true source of, you know, cultural representation, but I don't think it's one that should be um, idolized. Thank you very much, Jennifer Jones, Colorado's Women Organization. Earth Day at Syntex. What a fun time it was. It was the environmental wackos against the corporate articulates. Jan Scott tonight goes to Earth Day. We breathe in bad air. Well, we're at Syntex Chemicals today on the first day of Earth Day here in Boulder. And there's a demonstration going on. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's wrong with Pat Bolin. You tell me what's wrong with Pat Bolin. What's wrong with Mile High Stadium? Mile High Stadium's oh what well oh, okay wait a minute. Next we got a Mile High Stadium, Pat Bolin, suck an egg. What the hell's wrong with Pat Bolin? Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Jan Scott tonight, inside of Mile High Stadium. We don't need to build a, a new stadium. This is a beautiful stadium. Look, all the room in the world to sit. These chairs are comfortable. The field is beautiful. It's a huge stadium. What's the problem? There's nothing wrong with this facility. Why should we spend millions for bowling? I'm gonna tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The answer is one word, Portisans. Partisans. Just bring partisans in here. It's bathrooms. They want a new facility because there aren't enough bathrooms. Well, hell, bring in partisans. Yes, Jan Scott, I'm for you. Save your money. Let Bolin, you know, I don't know, suck a raw egg, Pat. Jan Scott, Mile High Stadium. You know, fuck him. This is a beautiful stadium. What's, what's wrong with this? This is nice. We, you, we, 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 we need a new stadium? No! The Broncos need a new owner or something. Well, we're in the women's room, ladies and gentlemen, here at Mile High Stadium. Here are all the stalls. There evidently are not enough um, some partisans. Just put in a few partisans. These are, you know, these work pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, tw
15. Okay, so they need 10 times that. Porta Sands. Woman's Room, Mile High Stadium. Since a lot of our work previously has been that we model a certain surface, like a creature, like a T-Rex, and then we animate that surface along, and then we light that surface and put a texture on it and such. Now with a tornado, a tornado isn't really a, a confined surface like that. Maybe the skinny one you can do that, but once you go to the big one and it's just sort of dust moving around, you really have a little bit. Yeah, there is. You can see that it's made out of all added dust. Of billions of little particles. And so what we do, we don't animate quite that many, but we do animate a large number of particles and have them all behave by a certain rule set with, of course, some turbulence built in. So that kind of control of a simulation over that many particles, you really need to get some rule set, some software that really allows you to add a lot of neat, unique features to the motion, but then um, also allows you to have control to make small changes to it. If I say, I want this 10% faster, you have to be able to go in there and, and nudge that number up and make sure that you still get something that looks the same but rotates 10% faster. So it's really moving a lot of particles and then we have a special purpose render that uh, renders those little particles and, and clumps them together to make it look at with the different color ranges to sort of make it look like the... I think every sequence has a different looking tornado and there's a lot of reference out there and what we have found that hardly any tornado in that reference of home videos, unfortunately, because quality isn't so great that we can just imagine what the thing would look like if you ever captured anything on high quality film. But there's a lot of range out there, so we spend a lot of time looking at those tapes and figuring out, okay, what is interesting about particular tornadoes? And also interesting in the time that we have in the picture. Most of those shots are, you know, five minute shots following the tornado, and you can see some development. Of course, what we have to do is in a in a four to five second shot, we have to show movement and development, and we have to keep it alive and active. So it's, it's a little bit different. In some ways, we have looked at a lot of the scientific aspects and then had to say, okay, what will work sort of in a dramatic Hollywood setting in a certain shot? So there's certainly some bending of reality in that sense, but I think, I think we got a lot of the essence of the beauty, but then also the, the fear associated with this. Because I, I've never seen a real tornado, but I imagine that I would just be as much fascinated by its, by its beauty than by its threat in some way, you know. Well, we're running the Boulder Boulder on our newest Squeego Adidas. Here, I'll stop and take a break, show them to you. These are the new ones for people that don't need uh, any kind of support. These are the Oswego, made by um, Adidas. They're really nice shoes. Very, lots of cushion in them. Uh, you don't need a lot of support in these. What Adidas says about them is that they're lightweight trainers for the runner who do not need support devices. Uh, they're quilted nylon mesh, synthetic leather trim, durable lightweight upper midsole and outsole, beefed up compression molded EVA midsole, carbon rubber outsole, extremely flexible forefoot. These are the Oswego and they of course are by Adidas. These also by Adidas are the typical um, response trail shoe. These are good for running in the mountains, they're a training off-road running shoe. They're water resistant, have mesh uh, on the upper section, the midsole and outsole compression molded EVA midsoles. They're an aggressive outsole, look at that. Great for different types of services. Off-road shoes by Adidas. Jan Scott tonight. There goes the last guy in the boulder boulder right there. Look at him. I'm going to kick his ass. Let me get him. Oh, cool. Would you like to go up there, Josh?
back here at Boulder Army Store for this year's Boulder Boulder and our spring television special with our old friend Pat Long, ladies and gentlemen, with some of the latest gear in uh, running for this year. What are, what are you going to show us first, Pat? Well, we've got a lot of uh, innovative, unique running gear here at the Army Store. We're going to just show you a few okay, things. Good. Number one. Number one. Fanny packs mm -hmm. with the water bottle on them. Don't be hot without it. Yep. You get thirsty. Can you run with these? They're comfortable. You, you can run. Walk, oh, these are sprint. made by a local company, Z Creation, here in Boulder. Here in Boulder. Good, 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 good product. Good, good Boulder product. Good, good for running. Okay, fine. Okay. Let's just we'll set it right down below us here. Okay. That's great. Incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, Vanna White's here in Boulder. Oh, these are uh, running shoes. Yes, yeah, so these okay. are these are the original running shoes. Uh, the first Boulder Boulder back uh, yep. back in the dark ages the was one these, with these. What, what, run, the these particular shoes. Now, what are these? These mm -hmm. are your Converse All Star Chuck Taylors. Mm -hmm. uh, we already. These are just Converse All Stars. Probably one of the best running shoes in America. Better than Adidas. Better than uh, better, better better when you're on. Never mind. Better. Okay, well, they're the, certainly better. We okay, fine. Running shoes, and you can play basketball with them. Okay, so now if you're having a problem when you're out on the course, out on the course running, um, or if you're running, uh, what is this called? You have to is, aim it right at the camera. This is called jogger fogger. Jogger and fogger. if you're out jogging and you, got, you have a dog or a or a coyote or a bear or anything else come after you, this is what to have with or you. Or an assailant. And or an assailant, and especially an assailant. Spray them or you happen to run into uh, a Boulder restaurant where people are still smoking. <laughs> you, can, huh? you can use this. Or on a high smog day right there, here. High you'll, be, you'll be safe. Let me put this on here. Go ahead, for please me. put it on. Jan Scott here at Boulder Army Store looking at uh, running fashions for uh, 1996. Of 96, this should work pretty well. How's that? Good. Great. Well, let's, Great. let's go to uh, let's go to the outback. You got a cigarette? No. All right. All right. They were not amused. They knew who I was. Okay. Who I am? Okay. What else? And then, of course, if you have a bigger problem, a bigger problem, <laughs> someone attacks you. Someone you attacks can, uh, you from from above or the side. Wear this helmet. This is a special runner's protective helmet. If you're running in a bad neighborhood, they come after you with big sticks, trying to steal your purse, trying to knock you down, trying to hurt you. You wear this, and and you will be safe. You will be safe with this, or, or okay, or with the mace. Come on down here, lower. Okay. Or with the mace. And then finally, bring this over finally. to us. <laughs> you're really having a problem. If you're in a real bad neighborhood, do not carry a handgun. Carry one of these. Just frag everybody. It'll take on an entire gang of five. Jan Scott, Boulder Army Store. Hiking's big big uh, this year, so you have some new uh, 1996 uh, state-of-the-art camping gear in, in running gear. Camping gear. Hiking yes, gear. Let's hiking look at gear. It. Okay. This is a bicycling pack, mm -hmm. and it has... Uh, place here on the front that's designed to hold your bike helmet. It's not on there right now. It has special mesh on the back that holds the backpack away from your back so you don't get a, get a sweaty back when you're bicycling. And the neatest thing it has is a built-in rain cover for the backpack so if you're bicycling in the rain oh, this rain no cover kidding. will go over the pack and keep the contents dry. That's pretty good. You can also keep your cat in there. Or you can keep your cat in there. Okay, Kelty, they're still Good making one. nice packs, aren't they? Yeah, Kelty's been around for a long time. There's Kelty packs on the wall. Beautiful. Uh, in fact, they do all of their design consulting right here in the city of Boulder, Colorado. Is that, is that right? Have you guys outfitted any anybody for, um, the, like everybody's climbing in the Himalayas right now, it's that time of the year, people are up in... Um, Sure, people come in all the time that are going to Himalayas, Nepal, going on treks, and uh, do they really? Sure. Into this store? Into this store. I mean, that's pretty amazing because if you think about it, all over the world, yeah, yeah, yeah right. mm -hmm. people from Boulder go there. I can assure you. Yeah. Do you know them? No, I not not personally. No, yeah. but maybe someday I will. Actually, yeah. I know one. Excuse yeah. me, I do know one, and he uh, he had on some boots from the Boulder Army store. Cool. <laughs> Porta potty for your campsite. Mm -hmm. Is that for a person? That is for a person. It sure is. Do you ever have a, like a wild bear come over and just take a huge dump in one of those? It could happen. It could happen. Doubtful. We also have flak jackets for urban runners in the Denver metropolitan area. Yeah, and people come here from Denver to buy these, do they? Mm -hmm. Occasionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it makes uh, sense. hard to find out. What a statement it is about Denver, huh? Helga. The Bosnian <laughs> Army. That looks great. Doesn't it? You know? I had to wear this to be a good racing helmet, huh? <laughs>
good for a TV super action hero. Well, it's Shannon Scott, Pat's brother, big yeah, brother, yeah. <laughs> right, right here. Rock climbing equipment for uh, '96. What do you, what do we have? What's out new that are people are? What are people excited about this year? Um, I don't know, excited about inexpensive ropes. Uh huh. Yeah, I got some good deals on those. Mm -hmm. Um, what else are they excited about? Yeah. Um, they're excited about about headlamps. Wear this on your head and you can rock climb at night if you want. Time. You can rock climb at night. <laughs> well, okay. they they got to be out of your mind. To do uh, that, I don't, don't know. If, I don't know if that's a good idea, but they, they buy them and you know you can do anything at night with one of these babies. You know, it's uh, bright and bright or not so bright either way. Well, this has been great fun here, ladies and gentlemen, at Boulder Army Store. For uh, they have the uh, latest in running gear for running from a fire and running from the police and the cops. No one will know who I am. Jan Scott, action television hero. Yeah. Signing off. <laughs> huh? Cool. Signing this is, off. This is great fun. Dana White, ladies and gentlemen. Pat Long. And Jan Scott. Yeah. Where's With my, Jan Scott. Where the hell's my truck? See you guys. Thanks so much. <laughs> Looking at some new hiking shoes from Vasque this year, I have on the Super Hiker 2, these guys right here ladies and gentlemen, these are good if you have um, a frame pack on, you need some stability, if you're out uh, hiking, they're light, uh, they take a little while to break in, but they're very, very, very comfortable. The second shoe out by Vasque this year, the most popular shoe in Boulder this year for hiking, is called the Sundowner, made by Vasque. This is a medium, uh, medium hiking shoe, all leather, as you can see. Finally, for hiking shoes, a popular one also here in Boulder, called the Skywalker. Very uh, light, lots of Gore-Tex in it, some leather. Uh, I broke these in in about two or three days. Uh, these are a good, very light hiking shoe. They'll work in the snow, they'll work in the springtime, and then you can go almost trail running with them, but not quite. So here we have Skywalk for, from Gore-Tex for Boulder hikers. Then the Sundowner right here, medium duty uh, hiking shoe. And finally, this one right here, which is the uh, Super Hiker 2, uh, if you're gonna carry a pack and you're gonna do some backpacking. Continuing our coverage, not only the Boulder Boulder, but it's our outdoor show and we try to bring some of the, you know, favorite hiking uh, shoes that people like in Boulder. We called, incidentally, folks, we called North Face. They told us these were the three most popular hiking shoes for hikers in Boulder. Jan Scott, Jan Scott tonight.
I bite you? Other creativity really has paid off and it's just, it's the greatest feeling, you just get the chills. Hi, how's it going, you guys? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, Jam Scott Boulder Fire Department here for toxic inspection. Come on in. <laughs> huh? You see any toxic spills in here? <laughs> it's only in the bathroom. Yeah. For the premiere show of the Jan Scott Tonight, with your host Jan Scott. Jan's guests tonight include Boulder City Councilwoman Sally Martin and Pastor Pat Graham of the Good Shepherd Christian Center. And the topic for you viewers to call in about: Should Boulder cancel the mall crawl? Uh, excuse me, the Boulder Boo in 1990, or should we just keep shrimming along the way we are? And now here's Jan. Last Saturday night. We nearly had a riot on the Boulder Mall. Um, 30,000 people came here and uh, duked it out. You already know that. The part that really bothers me is that we had officials from our city have a press conference in front of the, um, in front of the courthouse. We had a policeman there. We had David Grimm, who's a spokesman for the city. We had, I don't know, we had four people, actually. Who the heck were they? Boulder Camera's got all these people here. David Grimm. Frank Gray, the mall commissioner, downtown uh, management commission, um, John McFerrin, chairman of downtown Boulder Incorporated, they had this uh, press conference to say, don't come to Boulder for the mall crawl. All right, and they invited every newspaper and every TV station in on the front range. And that was tantamount of inviting people to come. And they said, we're really concerned. We might have a, a fights. We might have a riot, that kind of thing. So I wonder, why would we do that? Why would our fish officials, who knew we were going to have a problem, why would they have a press conference and invite uh, a ton of people to come here? That's one. The other is, the, and you've seen the camera. If you read the Daily Camera, you've seen these stories that have been running. Okay, One of them says, according to our mall commissioner, that couldn't figure out why people were fighting. Why were people fighting? Because they weren't drinking. There, was, there weren't any uh, alcohol or drugs allowed on the mall. But when you went down there, the whole place was intoxicated. And there's a question of alcohol and drugs that has been missed by some of our officials. And tonight, the question is, what should we do to end violence? Uh, Boulder City Councilwoman. Um, do you have any comments, Sally? Um, you heard what I had to say. Uh, you were a little concerned about coming here before because you, you didn't know uh, how, well, how you'd be treated on the program well, tonight. I, I, was, uh, I was on the mall. <laughs> you were on the mall, I yeah. was on the mall on Halloween. I didn't stay very long. Um, I was there about 10.30. I came upon some women fighting right in front of the Boulder Daily Camera. <laughs> The crowd was encouraging them to continue fighting. There was a lot of broken glass on the on the street, and I went looking, uh, hunting for some police officers. I found them somewhere mm. behind the old oh, Chicago. Told them uh, what was going on and that I was really worried. I think that from the eleven-year history of the uh, of the mall crawl, the Boulder Boo, whatever, the Halloween celebration, um, the first few years were fun. Yeah. 
not fun I, anymore. I really enjoyed it. Ten years ago, you kind of get down there and yeah. do these goofy Families costumes and be sort of, early. sort of, sort of funny at that mm -hmm. level. But the things have progressed. What, um, what, what do you think needs to be done? Mm -hmm. What are you, you're a you're a city mm -hmm. councilwoman. You you represent us. What what do you, what do you uh, what do you recommend for 19? I think that the council and I certainly mm -hmm. am going to be one of them, who will direct the city manager to take every step possible to eliminate the late night uh, activity down on the, on the mall in Halloween. Now, the, it's fun for the children. I don't know if any of you were down there, if your audience was down mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, in the early evening when the kids were there, late afternoon, early mm -hmm. evening when the children are there in their costumes and they're having a good time. It, it's, last five years have turned to violence. It's not fun anymore. So how it's do you end this thing, though? I mean, how do, how does the how do we have our officials have a press conference, you know, and then how do you end it? You you can't you can't do that. How are you going to end a Boulder tradition? Well, I think what you do, you do is start right now by telling people that we've had our last last late night celebration but of was, Halloween. But it wasn't even a, it wasn't even an official celebration. Like the city said this is not ideal. We're here to serve and protect. I mean, that's what the mm -hmm. press conference mm -hmm. was about. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like no you know, more bands. No, no more in invitations to come to Boulder for Halloween. It's now time for some of the other communities if they want to do that to take over. It's uh, we need to discourage or to let's say encourage the administration of the universities, the high schools, to get that message out, and we need to make that message very clear David that we're going Grimm to do that. David went to Madison, Wisconsin, yes. and he found out there they did a press campaign mm -hmm. to try to discourage mm -hmm. it. Do you mm -hmm. think they'll do something like that here? I I, I wouldn't uh, be surprised. Is waging war on drug smugglers, and you can help. If you see any unusual activity involving private boats or planes that might be connected to drug smuggling, call the U.S. Customs Service 24 hours a day, toll free at 1 800 BE ALERT. You can remain anonymous, and you could receive a cash reward if your information leads to the arrest and prosecution of drug smugglers. Help stop drug smuggling. Call 1 800 BE ALERT. There's, uh, will you tell us about Halloween? What is the, um, what is Halloween? And you know, to the bottom line on it, what are, what are we dealing with from a preacher's point of view or from a Christian point of view? Okay, Halloween starts back in the Judeo-Christian uh, traditions. It starts with Nimrod at the, at the Tower of Babel, and it goes through the high priests and the high holidays, and the diversions from first the Jewish religion and traditions. And then in approximately 133 BC, the last Babylonian priest, the high priest from Babylon, Attalus III, who was the, the high priest of Pergamum, he gave that title to the Roman emperor, Julius Caesar. And at first it went to the Romans, and they gave it. Julius Caesar served as the first uh, Pontifus Maximus. <laughs> now, Pontifus Maximus, people associate with the Catholic Church. Pontifus Maximus is the uh, Latin term mm -hmm. for the chief bridge builder, or one who bridges the gap between Satan and mortal men. And most people don't understand that that term is, is meant for that. Uh, Julius Caesar was the first one who called the Druids priests. Now the Celtic tradition says that the, that the Druids were uh, warlocks, witches, soothsayers, and really st steeped into uh, a animal and human sacrifice. So basically, what you're getting at here is historically, if we follow it back, the, the, they were connected with Satan. Uh, with Satan and or a god that they turned to worship not knowing. They were just this, this deceived people. I mean, look, this is the 20th century. Halloween is generally a fun kind of time. How could it still be evil today? I mean, we're not doing evil things, are we? We're not. Hi, how's it going, you guys? Hey. How you doing? Yeah, Jam Scott, Boulder Fire Department here for toxic inspection. Come on in. <laughs> huh? Any toxic spills in here? <laughs> Only in the bathroom. Uh,